This is a key to uh, Topic 19, Part A, Worksheet 1. And in um, Topic uh, 19, that's where you were talking about or you were learning about um, the uh, operations on functions, whether you're, you're adding functions, subtracting functions, multiplying, or dividing. Um, so in number one, you're given two functions, f of x and g of x. Notice that f of x is a quadratic function and g of x is a linear function. And number one and two are fairly straightforward. You had this idea in previous lessons and even in a previous course. So let's look at number one. So in number one, you want to find f of negative two. Now remember, um, you need to, your, your function here, these two functions, they have a uh, a name, so to speak. This is function f of x, and this is function g of x. So if you want to find f of negative 2, then you have to go to function f to determine what f of negative 2 is. So so remember, um, f of negative 2 would, would imply that, that you want to find the value of this function f of x when x, see this is x right here, um, when x takes the value of negative 2. So this becomes 3 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. And so uh, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4 plus 4. And so 12 plus 4 plus 4 is 20. So f of negative 2 is equal to 20. So we'll put 20 here. Um, now it did say show work for problems 3 through 7. So 1 and 2, no work was needed. All right, in number two, you, you want to find three times g of two. So the first thing you have to do first is find g of two. So you got to go to your function g of x. So g of two then will be five times two minus three. And so that's 10 minus three, which is seven. Now that's g of two. So then you got to come back here and then say three times seven, which is 21. So number two, you have uh, 21 for 3 times g of 2. Okay, so the rest, you, you are required to show some work. So let's look at number 3. So number 3, you have f plus g of 4. Well, remember, by definition, by definition, this means f of 4 plus g of 4. Okay, so now what I need for you to do is to go off to the side and figure out what f of 4 is. So remember, you have to go to your function f to do that. So here's your function f. So in place of x, you're going to substitute 4. So I get 3 times 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus 4. And so 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is 64. Um, I'm sorry. 16 times 3 is... 48, and then 48 times, uh, I'm sorry, 16, <laughs> let's do this over, 16, uh, 4 squared is 16, 16 times 3 is 48, all right, and then minus 2 times 4, which is a negative 8, and then plus 4, and so uh, 48 minus 8 is 40, and then 40 plus 4 is 44, so that's this right here, so we're going to come back and we'll put this as 44, plus now you have to find g of 4. So remember, g of 4 means you go to your function g, and in place of x, you substitute 4. So I get 5 times 4, so that's x right here, and then minus 3. So then using the order of operations, 5 times 4 is 20, and so 20 subtract 3 is 17. So then you come back, and so therefore f plus g evaluated at 4 becomes 44 plus 17, which is 61. All right, so the answer there is 61. All right, now remember the work is on uh, the other paper. Okay, so number four, we have F subtract G at three. Well, just like this one, just like the previous one, so remember by definition, this means F of three minus G of three. Now, Remember, in, in lessons, you learned that this is not the distributive problem, that it's not be multiplication. So f plus g 
does not mean, uh, this, this notation here does not mean f plus g times 4. It means f plus g evaluated at 4. All right, so then by definition, that would mean f of 4 plus g of 4. All right, so then let's go up to the side and figure out what, g, what f of 3 is. So just like the previous one where we saw the variable x, you'd substitute 3. So, so when I do that one, and we go to f this time. So you get 3 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 4. Well, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Uh, and then a negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6, and then plus 4. So that is 21 plus 4, which is 25. So um, f of 3 becomes 25. Now I'm going to subtract from that g of 3. So g of 3, then remember you're going to go now to your to your linear function g of x, and where we see the variable x, you're going to substitute 3. So I get 5 times 3 minus 3, 15 minus 3, which is 12. So then, so then f minus g at 3 becomes 25 minus 12, which is 13. Number 4. The answer is 13. And so uh, remember the work is on the other sheet. Okay, so let's look at number five. So number five, we have, so instead of saying f minus g at three, so number five says g minus f at three. Okay, so g minus f at three. All right, so number five, g minus f at three evaluated at 3. So by definition, this means g of 3 minus f of 3. So again, you go to your, let, let's do g of 3 first. So g of 3, make sure you go to the correct function. So g of 3, so there's g of x right here. So g of 3 then would be 5 times 3 minus 3. So that's 15 minus 3, which is 12. All right, so similar to what we had here. I mean, it's exact the same thing. So they're going to be the exact same thing, by the way. So g of 3 is 12, and then when we find f of 3, well, f of 3 would be 25. All right, so, so then I'm just going to go ahead and just use the previous problem. So f of 3 from the previous problem, remember, was 25 from, previous, from number 4. All right, so then g of 3 here becomes 12, and then you're subtracting f of 3, which is 25. So remember the previous one, f subtract g at 3 is 13, all right? So therefore, g subtract f at 3, g subtract f at 3, then would be the opposite. 12 minus 25 is a negative 13, all right? So this was a positive 13. This was a negative 13, all right? Um, and, and remember, the reason that's true is because f minus g, f minus g, note, f minus g and g minus f, so f minus g and g minus f are opposites. All right? Okay. Now, so that was number five. So let me go ahead and write that down. So that was number five. So number five, we have negative 13. And so the work is on the other page. Let's look at number six. So number six, we have we have this, we have g, and remember this, this closed dot here means multiplication, evaluated at negative 2. So, so g times f evaluated at negative 2. So g times f at negative 2, of negative 2. So that means g of negative 2 times f of negative 2. That's what that means. So let's go and figure out what, what g of negative 2 is. So g of negative 2, remember you go to your function g, which is this linear function where we see the variable x, you can substitute negative 2. So g of negative 2 becomes 5 times negative 2 minus 3, negative 10 minus 3, which is a negative 13. Okay? So g of negative 2 is a negative 13. And I'll put that in parentheses since that's negative times, and then I'll put that in parentheses as well since I already put this in parentheses. Um, f of negative 2. This time I go to my function f, where we see the variable x, I substitute negative 2. So I get 3 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. Well, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. A negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4, and then plus 4. 
So 12 plus 8 gives us 20. And so therefore, negative 13, so, so g times f at negative 4 becomes negative 13 times 20, which gives us negative 260. All right, so that was number 6, so negative 260. And remember, the work is on the next page. And then finally, number 7. So number 7, you want to find g plus f at negative 3. So g plus f at negative 3. So again, by, remember, this is addition now, so be careful. So g plus f at negative 3 means g of negative 3 plus f of negative 3. And so, and so I can figure out what, what g of negative 3 is. So g of negative 3. So I go to my function g. Wherever I see the variable x, I substitute negative 3. So I get 5 times negative 3 minus 3. So 5 times negative 3 is a negative 15. A negative 15 and a negative 3 is a negative 18. So g of negative 3 is a negative 18. And I'm going to add that to f of negative 3. So f of negative 3 becomes, so this time I go to my function f, where we see the variable x, I substitute negative 3. So that becomes 3 times negative 3 squared minus 2 times negative 3 plus 4. And so negative 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. A negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6, and then plus 24. All right, 6 and 4 is 10. 10 and 27 is 37, right? Okay, so I get negative negative 18 plus 37. So f plus g at, at negative, I'm sorry, g plus f at negative 3 becomes, when I add these two numbers together, becomes a positive 19. So in number 7, the answer is 19. All right, and then remember the work is on the next page. Okay, so that is the key that is the key to um, the worksheet on topic 19, part A.